I was 21 when this happened. I was shopping at Walmart getting some groceries. While I was there, there was a random woman that looked to be around my age who came up to me. She asked me who I was and I told her my name. She said that I seemed interesting and she had asked for my social media. I gave her my Facebook and she laughed, but as she laughed, she kind of looked at me, giving me the creepiest smile and kind of did the I'm watching you kind of gesture. I thought it was odd, but I didn't think too much into it and I continued my shopping. When I checked out at the self-checkout, I saw the same woman there. I checked out, loaded my groceries in my car, and drove back to my house. When I got home, I had got a friend request from the same woman. I confirmed it, and she had sent me a text message asking how my day is. I told her it was fine, and I was going to be a little busy today, and that I'll talk to her later. She said it was fine, and a couple of hours later when night fell, she had sent me another message. I couldn't believe what it said. She asked me if I wanted to hook up and have sex. That she's never had sex before, but that she wanted to try it with me. I told her I was bisexual and that I had a boyfriend. She then replied back with, Don't worry, he doesn't need to know that. It'll stay between us. I told her I wasn't interested and that we can just be friends. But she said she wanted to be more than friends. I then replied back with, Um, what part of I'm not interested aren't you understanding? She had totally went off on me after that, cussing me out and like totally losing it. My boyfriend came over to my house later that night to spend the night. When he arrived, I showed him all of the messages the woman sent me. He was disgusted. And then, about three hours later, at one in the morning, we heard four loud bangs at the door then someone screaming. It was the woman. I guess she had looked up my name and found my address, and she had actually showed up at my house. She was screaming like a psycho. If I can't have you, nobody can. I told her to get the fuck off my property, or I'd be calling the police. She said she had a knife on her, and that if I didn't let her in, she was going to cut herself. My boyfriend then immediately called the police, and they were literally here in about five minutes. As soon as they arrived, they arrested her. I showed the officer all of the messages, and she said to drive to the police station to make a statement. My boyfriend and I got in my car, and we drove to the station. The both of us gave our statements, and I ended up filing a restraining order against her. I've since deleted the messages and blocked the woman's account. Now I only friend people that I actually know and trust. Please be careful who you talk to on social media as you never know what could happen. I just want to say when all of this happened, I was 18, and I was young, innocent, and naive. Now that I'm in my mid-twenties, I would never ever let this happen again. It was my freshman year at college, and as one could imagine, I was excited to be on my own for once in my life. So excited to be on my own that I decided I was going to take summer classes on campus. That way I wouldn't have to worry about coming in when the big crowd of freshmen came. And I would also already know where everything was. Plus, it meant I could get away from my parents even faster. But mainly, all I could think about was boys. You see, I never dated anyone through high school, so I thought I would find my one true love at college. Because of course, that's what all the movies told me anyways. About two weeks go by, and me and one of my roommates, I had four by the way, were all hanging out in the lounge area showing off pictures from Instagram. We were showing our friends, family, etc. Well, my roommate who I'll call Tracy had showed me a picture of her and these two guys. One of the guys was Tracy's boyfriend, and the other was Tracy's boyfriend's best friend. I'll call him Sean. Now, Sean was very attractive, and I even told Tracy that I thought he was hot, and she told me that he went to the tech college near us, and that he was single. Now, a day or two goes by after this, and she tells me she told Sean that I was interested in him, and he wanted to know if he could follow me on Instagram so he could DM me. At the time, I really trusted Tracy, because she seemed like a really cool, chill girl. 
so I excitedly told her yes. Oh, how I really wish that I never told her yes. I talked to Sean for about a week before I was comfortable enough to give him my phone number. At first, he seemed super sweet. He would always send me text messages first thing in the mornings, telling me to have a good day at class and that he couldn't wait to FaceTime me that night, and we would FaceTime every night. At first, I really loved it because I had never had a boy give me so much attention, and like I said before, I had never dated anyone, so I was just really over the moon then he was even interested enough to talk to me, but it started to get annoying. He would text me almost every second of the day and try to FaceTime me at least four times. When I wouldn't respond to him, he would ask if I was okay, why I wasn't answering him, and if I was seeing another guy. It would make him really mad if I was. I, of course, once seeing the messages, would try to reassure him that I was okay and that I wasn't seeing anyone. Like I said in the beginning, I was young and naive, so I didn't really see it as a red flag. Things kept going downhill, though. It came to a point where he had started asking for pictures of me, either just selfies or pictures of me in the mirror. I wouldn't send them, though, because I just wasn't comfortable and he would brush it off, saying he was fine, and that I could send him pictures of myself whenever I was ready. One day I was in class for a long time because it was lab, and it started at 7 p.m., and it wouldn't end until 10 p.m. that night. For those of you who don't know, labs in college can last from two to four hours, and mine just happened to be three hours that night. Once class ended, I headed to my dorm, and I took out my phone. I clicked the button on the side lighting up the screen. I had 380 unread text messages, 10 missed calls, and 3 voicemails from Sean. Before I could even react or read all the messages, my phone started to ring. Instead of it being Sean, it was actually my dad. He had called to make sure that I was doing alright because he had gotten an alert from the phone company that I had gotten all those messages. I was still on the family phone plan. I don't know why, but I just lied to him and laughed it off, saying that I was just in a group chat with a bunch of girls from school. Once I got off the phone with my dad, I then quickly went to look at all of the messages I had gotten. Most of them were demanding why I wasn't answering him, and that he would come and find me if I didn't answer him. The voicemails were crude, and mostly of him saying that he was going to find me, and that when he did, he was going to punish me for not answering him. After this, I just completely blocked him on everything I could think of, completely freaked out about the whole thing. About a week goes by, and I start to slowly forget all about the incident, try not to think much about it. At least, that's what I was trying to do. During that whole week, I felt like someone was watching me, but I just brushed it off as me being paranoid. At the end of the week, my roommate Tracy, who I'd been avoiding, then comes up to me shouting at me saying how I broke Sean's heart and he had called her crying, saying how he didn't understand why I stopped talking to him. I couldn't even get a word in because of how fast she was talking. She finally called me a self-centered bitch and then walked away. I went to class right after that, not realizing that I forgot to lock my dorm room. You see, I lived with four girls and each girl had their own room, which would lock from the outside with a key. Well, when I came back from class, I noticed that my door was slightly cracked open. My heart dropped into my stomach. I hesitated going in. My hands were shaking terribly, but I finally got the nerve to push it open. Nothing. There was nothing out of place, or so it seemed. Even though there was nothing out of place, I could have sworn that I closed the door before leaving for class. Even though I don't remember if I locked it or not, I know for sure that I closed the door, so I asked all of my roommates, including Tracy, if anyone had gone into my room that day, and they all denied it, even Tracy, but I just knew in my heart someone had been in there. I tried to brush it off, but I couldn't. So one weekend, when I knew that all of my roommates were going to be out of town, I switched dorm buildings, and I roomed with a girl that I'd gotten to be close friends with. After I moved in with her, I then told her all that had happened, and she said that she would walk with me to my classes, which thankfully, we had most of our classes together, 
except for the one night I had lab. She would walk with me to my lab and then wait until my lab was done to then walk with me back to the dorm. One night though, she had actually gone out of town to go see her parents or something. I was walking back from my lab and it had gotten really late that night. I heard someone walking behind me, but I didn't pay any attention to it since class was just let out. But as I was walking, I could hear the steps getting closer. So I started to pick up my walking speed. At this point, I could tell someone was following me and I was really afraid to look back. As the footsteps increased and got faster, I started running as fast as I could. Now let me tell you, I'm not athletic by any means. Somehow though, adrenaline probably, I was able to sprint to my dorm building, still hearing someone running behind me. And I thankfully already had my keycard out to get into the building. I then swiped it on the door and then slammed it shut behind me. Looking up from slamming the door, I see someone who's probably about 10 feet away from the door staring at me. Even though the person's hood was up and I couldn't see their face, I could clearly see that they were looking at me, and I just knew that it was Sean. Not wasting any more time, I go to the RA that was up that night, now bawling, telling them what had just happened. He called the police, and I then told them everything that happened, but they basically just said that they couldn't do anything since I didn't see his face. After all this happened, I called my friend and I told her what happened and she never went out of town again if I ever had any late night classes. I eventually ended up deciding that college just wasn't for me, and I dropped out. I moved back to my home state, and I went to cosmetology school to become a hairdresser. I still haven't dated anyone yet, though. Maybe it's the fear of something like that happening again. I'll never know. I do know that I'm super careful with who I talk to now, and who I give my social media and phone number to. I'm still scared to go to places by myself, even though it's been years and I'm states away. Even so, I really hope that I never see Sean again. My name is Zach, and this is the true story of what happened when I was just 13. It was September and I would just gone back to school after summer break. Everything was fine for the first week. I was happy to be reconnecting with my friends and generally being back to school, but I didn't know it would be so short-lived. On that Sunday night, I had dinner with my family before heading up to my room, and I glanced out of my window to see an orange van parked there. Not out of the ordinary, as I lived on quite a busy road, so I thought nothing of it, and I had played some video games before bed. The morning after, I was awoken by the sound of a rough engine, and it was the same orange van pulling up to the same spot. I thought it was a little odd at how early he parked up, but again, I just went about my day. It took me around six to eight minutes to get to school, so I always walked there. Everything in my day was going fine. While at lunch, I decided to have my crafty cigarette, as I did behind the bike sheds at school, but when I looked left, all I felt was a chill go down my spine as I had then seen that same orange van parked across the road. This happened until Friday, before a man around 50 to 60 jumped out and then approached me. At this point, I was really scared and I didn't know what to do. The man who I'll call Ron had started asking me many questions about me and my family. If we argue often, how many people I live with, and so on. I was already freaked out at this point, so I just ran home as fast as I could. When I finally got home, I was thinking that maybe he got the hint, and I felt just a little bit more relaxed. Until an hour later, and he was then parked in the same place. At this point, I was so happy it was the weekend. I decided to stay inside all weekend long and just play video games with my friends online. It had turned 6 p.m. on a Saturday and I was feeling so relaxed. I hadn't even looked out the window. I was about to start a new match with my friends, but my phone rang. I looked and it said no caller ID. I thought it was my mother 
as she would often use her work phone to call me and my siblings. I answered the phone, and as I usually say hello, I got no answer back in return, just very heavy breathing. This happened about four times before a voice then finally spoke. Hello, Zach. I instantly recognized it. It was Ron. I started to panic, and I looked outside, and there he was. He was looking up out of his car window at me and smiling. I was way too scared to tell any of my family, so I phoned my friend who I'll refer to as Jack, and I told him everything. He instantly knew that I was telling the truth because he had noticed the orange van around the school too. We spoke about it for over an hour before we decided to call it a night, but as soon as the call finished, my phone rang again. This time I answered, and I then asked, What do you want? To which he then replied back with, You. I've been watching you closely on Instagram. I just hung up after that, and I went to bed really scared. The day after this happened, my friend Jack came to my home to walk with me to school after I called him to tell him the orange van was still outside. We left my home, only this time as we were walking, the orange van had followed us slowly. This is when we decided to run. As we got to the end of my road, the van sped up and then blocked us off. Ron stepped out of the van, grabbing my arm, then saying, I want you. You're coming with me. He also put Jack in the back of the van to stop him from talking too. I then asked him, Why are you doing this? Where are we going? To which he then replied back with, I already told you. I want you. We're going home. As he then shut the van door, me and Jack panicked as Ron started driving away with us. We searched everywhere in the van for something to help get us out. Just as we had given up, Jack had spotted a piece of the van's metal lining that was loose. We started to pull it off as quietly as possible. As it finally came off, it made a loud noise, and Ron then banged on the van, shouting at us, Quiet! while driving. Me and Jack then took the metal, and we forced open one of the doors. Ron was driving at a high speed, so we had no choice but to jump out. There were two people who were walking down the street at this time, they came to our aid as we jumped, and they kept us safe until the police came. Me and Jack told the police the full story, but Ron and his fan were never found. I'm not really sure, but I think he was using fake plates on the van. How else would he have not been found? I know this might sound fake, but I really was almost kidnapped by this psycho in his van. A month after all this happened, I had finally started to rebuild all of my confidence with all of the security measures in place. I was finally starting to feel like the old me, and I made sure that my Instagram account was private. I came home with my mother from school, feeling happy, and decided to play online games with Jack. Later that night, I got a notification on Instagram, a new message request. I opened it, and my blood turned cold. Upon reading it, it said, I'm still watching you, and I dropped my phone to the ground. After that happened, I deleted all of my social media accounts from that day forward, and I'm probably not going to make any new accounts for a really long time. Attention horror fans! Are you ready for a one-of-a-kind addition to your collection? Get ready to show your support for our horror YouTube channel by owning a special limited edition MJV plush toy. That's right, we're bringing the scares to life with an exclusive high-quality plushie of MJV, our beloved horror character. Imagine having your very own cuddly, huggable version of MJV to keep you company while you binge-watch our spine-chilling content. But you must act fast, because these limited edition plushies will only be available for a short time. So don't wait, click the link in our bio and sign up with your email to be among the first to know when pre-orders begin. These MJV plushies are the perfect way to support our channel while adding a unique and exciting item to your horror collection. So, what are you waiting for? Get ready to embrace the horror and sign up for your limited edition MJV plushie today.